All right. Hi, Alize. Thanks for joining us today. Um, th this is the first video um, uh, for our 2022 SSI live stream interview series. Um, we might need to come up with like a better a better name for that. Um, but I'm the host, Clarissa Lamb. I'm an SSI science communications intern this summer. I'm actually the only science communications intern and the rest of our interns are doing lab science and are working with one of the curators um, or kind of curator adjacent um, scientists here at the Academy. And Alize is one of those in, uh, interns. And so we get to learn a little bit more about her today um, and her research and also just you know, your path from childhood all in your future plans in STEM. Um, and a little bit of extra background information for other people who are just joining, but SSI stands for Summer Systematics Institute. It's run by the California Academy of Sciences um, and funded by the National Science Foundation with a little bit of extra funding from Cal Academy itself. Um, and so, yeah, Alize, do you wanna introduce yourself, uh, where you go to school, your hometown, where you're studying, that kind of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Hi everyone, my name is Alize Gamber. I go to the University of San Francisco. I will be a senior this upcoming year. I am majoring in biology and I am actually getting a minor in Latin American studies. And my hometown is Monterey, California. Sweet, and then I can pull up your slideshow and then we can just kind of launch right into what you're doing here at SSA. Um, all right. Yeah, if you want to talk about initially about why you chose SSI as your program for the summer, um, and then you can go on into a bit about what you're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so why SSI? So I chose this program because Cal Academy has this huge emphasis in making the science feel very diverse and inclusive to all types of groups. So as a woman and a Latina, I felt very fortunate to be a part of this um, institute who also emphasizes like just the diversity in science. Okay, so moving on. So my project is with Dr. Kapan. I will be working on the Xerces genome project. So to give you a little bit more information, I'm gonna explain some more. Okay, so the Xerces butterfly is actually an extinct species. So they are the first insect to go extinct. Um, well, the first recorded. Um, so they went extinct in the 1940s due to its sand dune habitat loss from urban development of San Francisco. So as you can see here in the black and white photo, um, so San Francisco, especially in the Richmond area, was all sand dunes, and that's where the Xerces thrived and lived on. And then as soon as we started the construction of Golden Gate Park and just like housing facilities, they went extinct. So why are butterflies important? So butterflies are crucial pollinators and, and throughout their various life forms and stages, butterflies are just like a part of the ecological food web. So they are food sources for birds, small mammals, and other insects. So they play a big ecological role. And so the Cal Academy knows that, and so does the Presidio Trust. So they are actually collaborating on this restoration project. And I'm very fortunate enough to have this small part in it. Um, so what they're doing is that they're reintroducing a, a suitable ecological replacement for the Xerces butterfly. And then if you see on the right here, that is Dr. Capon and the rest of the team that I'll be working with. So my job this summer is to go through these three ecolo potential ecological replacements. So they are essentially cousins of the Xerces butterfly, and they're a part of the silvery blue species. And so these three species, I am going to be testing their genomes, what climate they come from, and also what host plant, so what they feed on and what their young lives on. Um, and then I'm going to be comparing it to what is available in the Presidio, and this has been a 10 year long process and just like project in the works. So I'm going to be seeing what's available in the Presidio right now and then what species um, is better adapted for that climate or for that ecology <laughs> or just yeah. for that ecological climate. Okay. Yeah, and I, I know a little bit of background on the Xerces, um, but deer reed is the food it eats. And do you, 
this might be a little niche, but do you know if they introduced deer weed like back into the Presidio or if they, it never went away? Yes. Well, according to Dr. Capon, he said that deer weed was originally in San Francisco, but because of like the construction of just like these houses and like just Golden Gate Park, it actually went away. So throughout this 10 year project, they actually pretty much like reintroduced it. So there's actually like huge like bundles and bushes of like deer weed. So essentially they're prepping for the butterflies. But yeah, that's a great question. And actually one of my research goals is to make sure that the species I choose actually feeds off of deer weed and the females can recognize deer weed as a good place to have their young on. And then, yeah. And then this is just a overarching like um, research goal right here. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right, let's, I guess, go on to the next question. But now that we've covered all of your research and what you're doing this summer and, you know, everything related to butterflies and STEM, I want to know a bit more about some of your earlier memories with STEM and nature or science and nature and just what inspired this love for STEM. Yeah, absolutely. So my early science and nature experience started when I was in fifth grade. So during this time, I was living in Pacific Grove, California, and I went to Robert Down Elementary School. And that year was a very lucky year because we actually received a grant from the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which is only like about 10 minutes away from the school. And so with that grant, we had frequent field trips and like behind the scenes tours at Monterey Bay Aquarium. And then we also went to other institutes and in like Moss Landing, Santa Cruz. So overall, they were just trying to expose like us like young ones to like the marine life and the importance of like keeping oceans like healthy and clean. So it was a very informative year. And on top of that, we actually went to a science camp, which is where at the end of fifth grade, we went to Mount Hermon, which is in the Santa Cruz mountain range. And we stayed in a cabin and we were there for a week and we went on these long, extensive like hikes every single day. And we had like a trained naturalist that would like point out like, oh, this plant is edible or like smell this plant or like look, these are redwoods. And then we actually all kissed a banana slug, which is like a tradition in Santa Cruz. So I was very fortunate to be part of that culture. <laughs> That's actually really funny because I never realized like I, I did kind of an equivalent in fifth grade too, where I kissed a banana slug for the first time and we did, but it, I'm from the Bay. So we went to Marin Headlands and uh, camped out there for like three nights and yeah. Kind of a yeah. similar fifth grade nature experience across across California schools. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Also, I, I know you didn't include this photo, but I think it's really just funny that you're from like this butterfly town or what was it? You're like Pacific Grove oh. is like the land of butterflies. Or yeah. Like no, that. I have to give a shout out to Pacific Grove. Maybe they're the mastermind behind this. So like <laughs> Pacific Grove is like known for their like monarch butterflies and we're known as like the home of the monarch butterflies, which is like a little bit of an overreach because monarch butterflies do migrate. So, <laughs> um, but like essentially like they come up here from Mexico and um, they're in October, like in October, they do a big festival and parade and you just see like children in like butterfly wings and just celebrating the monarchs. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see what, let's go into a little bit about how is your family and some of, you know, the other supporters you had growing up influenced your love for science? Yeah, absolutely. So this is this slide. Okay. So even though I'm the first one to go into science out of my family, um, science has always been around me. Nature has always been around me. And I will start with my parents. So this is Wayne and Leticia. Shout out mom and dad. <laughs> so I just want to thank them so much that they gave me endless um, encouragement and support throughout my whole like academic years and just like every single summer they would always like encourage me to apply some somewhere or like follow my passions and like what I want to do but I'm really thankful for them because there has been a lot of times where I've cried or I've like called them crying because of chemistry or math or whatever it may be and they're always like you know 
yeah, it's going to be rough. It's going to be hard, but you just got to keep on going or find a way around like, you know, the hurdles and the barriers. So huge shout out to them. They have been my rock throughout this whole thing. And then also I want to give a huge shout out to my sister. She has always been such a great listener. She always listens to everything that I like want to teach her and like I am passionate about. And like, I just want to like relay like the knowledge, like, you know, like whatever I learned in class, whatever I learned on my hikes or these like experiences I want to share with her. And I think it has helped because she got accepted to the Monterey Academy of Oceanography and Science at Monterey High School. And so it's Mayos. <laughs> that's the short name for it. But yeah, so I'm going to give her a huge shout out for that. And um, that's a very prestigious academy. So I'm really proud of her. And also my grandparents, like ever since I was little, they always took me on long walks. And at, during this time, we lived in Tucson, Arizona. So Tucson is located in the Sonoran Desert. So there's just like unique wildlife and vegetation there and we would just go on these long walks and just like you know look at the cacti like look at maybe like a road runner like go across the street like it was very informative and yeah it was really it was really nice to have that experience with my grandparents as well and then my grandpa john he has always been this huge naturalist and he has this like he donate so much money to these like not uh, these like conservation efforts and he always receives these like thank you gifts and they're like always like these bookmarks of like baby black bears or like these calendars of like natural like parks so he would always whenever we would see him he would always like give me all these calendars and bookmarks so like from a young age I learned like you know preservation and conservation is a very big thing and we should work together on that. And yeah, so the, that is my family. I've always been surrounded by science and nature and they've been so supportive of me. Oh, that's that's great, Alize. Especially your grandpa, John. I wonder like, you know, he'd be very proud of your conservation efforts right now. Yeah, fact, no, you're, like, absolutely. On a <laughs> project is pretty, or I guess, yeah, restoration project is pretty insane. Um, sweet. And then now that we've kind of covered the past a little bit. Um, let's let's look into the future. <laughs> what are your what are your plans for after um, after the summer, and how has SSI impacted those plans, if at all? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just gonna go back. Okay, so as I said um, earlier when I was introducing myself, so I'm gonna be a senior this year. So my plans after the summer is to you know grind it out my senior year like make the highest like grades possible and but yeah but after graduation i'm still interested in going to the medical field so particularly i am really interested in preventative medicine and doing research with genetics whether that's preventing um, diseases or preventing like cancer so i would be really interested in going into that type of research as well and then also SSI, like just being here and being in Cal Academy and just like they have a big sustainable or sustainable like mission and goal. So I throughout my life, I think it's like a lifelong commitment that I want to make where I want to participate like in politics, whether that's like in policy writing or just like advising. Um, and it could be with like healthcare or with just like sustainability. And also I want to be just a part of the sustainability movement, whether that's just like finding new ways to be zero waste or just um, or just finding replacements where, I don't know, just like I wanna make a lifelong commitment because being here has made me realize that we need to protect these natural ecosystems. So this is definitely something that I'll take forward and just being part of a restoration project and being part of the hope of like, just trying to repair things that we have damaged, whether we knew about it or we didn't. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, and then I guess anything, anything else you'd like to add? I think we're kind of nearing the end of our presentation. Yeah, yeah. I just want to add, um, keep an eye out for uh, the other SSI interns. Um, definitely follow along until our final projects. I feel like everyone has something great in the works. I'm so excited to see everyone present their final projects. And I'm excited to 
present mine as well. I'm going to be coding. I'm going to be programming. Um, so I'm very excited to learn these like high tech skills. Awesome. And then another thing is, do you want to add any of your networking information or leave any, um, you know, your LinkedIn information or your Instagram or any, or your email in case anyone watching this ever wants to contact you for future research opportunities, maybe? Oh my gosh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, yeah, I, all of these, all of my leading questions where, where I know what you're what's coming up next. Yeah, so. absolutely. Okay, so this is my LinkedIn. Um, the link's right there. Um, Clarissa taught me how to shorten the link, so shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, now people don't have to type in like a bunch of random numbers after afterwards. But yeah. Exactly. And then if you just want to follow my social media too, um, this is my Instagram. I am trying to like make this Xerxes like highlight on my profile like more consistently. So hopefully I'll have like a big like highlight by the end of the summer. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me, Allison, and being my little guinea pig for this first interview. Um, it's been a great experience, but good luck with your project. I'm I'm very excited to see your presentation. Like, I think, I mean, I think everyone's doing really interesting work, but I think this project is like really, really interesting and I'm excited about seeing what you turn up. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I hope all of you have a great rest of your day and yeah, stay tuned for more. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye.